So what's my spark? The thing that motivates me, that challenges me, that I'm perpetually exploring? This. The fact that 66 million girls are out of school globally. And this. The fact that 14 million girls under 18 will be married this year. That's 38,000 today and 13 just in the last 30 seconds. But then you compare it to something like this. The fact that if you give a girl seven years of education, just seven, she will marry on average four years later and have 2.2 fewer children. And if that isn't enough, the fact that women reinvest 90% of their income into the community compared to 30 to 40% for men. I first heard statistics like these and others when I attended the Bryn Mawr Heritage and Hope Conference in 10th grade with a contingent of Hewitt students and faculty. I, I couldn't believe, even though the conference was celebrating women's education and empowerment, they also were talking about the issues that girls were facing around the world. And I couldn't believe that girls around the world, just like me and younger, couldn't go to school, were, were born without the proper identification, couldn't uh, you know, have access to health care, were really faced lots of violence in all these unimaginable situations just because of the place that they were born and the circumstances into which they were born. I didn't understand how I had the choice to, to determine my future, but they weren't able to, to figure out where they wanted to go in life. And Nicholas Kristof, the journalist for New York, one of the journalists for the New York Times, ended his remarks by saying, when you win the lottery of life, you must discharge as well. I, as of you all, have won the lottery of life because of the fact, just the simple fact that we've been able to receive an education, that we have the freedom and the ability to make choices that will determine our future. So coming back to Hewitt, I learned about, I continued to learn about these issues and blogged about it for a 10th grade English blog project. This work connected me to an organization called Girl Up. Girl Up is a campaign of the United Nations Foundation that raises, that mobilizes teens around the world to raise awareness and funds for the world's hardest to reach adolescent girls. My initial involvement with the campaign was as a teen reporter here at the Clinton Global Initiative where I continued to learn about the unimaginable obstacles that girls around the world face, but I also learned that there were solutions, and that it was up to my generation, our generation, to act, and to start acting now. And so coming back to, um, to Hewitt, I really wanted to stay involved in the organization, and I continued my work as a teen advisor for the campaign. In my role as a teen advisor, one of my main focuses was how can I bring everyone together, because I saw that Yes, we can all have an impact. Each one of us can make a difference, but the, this difference and this impact can be multiplied when we combine our efforts, when we collaborate, when we, do, when we host joint events, when we serve as a resource as a, and a network for each other. So I created a network of, new, of Girl Up Clubs in the New York regional area, and this now serves as a model around the world, I mean around the country and other states, um, because, because of this power of collaboration and serving as a resource for each other. So my work with Girl Up took me to Guatemala in the spring, where I was able to not only learn, put faces to statistics and hear from these girls themselves, their stories, their passions, their dreams to the future, hear their voices, and you know, it was amazing to be able to see the impact that the program was having, the fact that it really, they really were making the difference in the lives of these girls. One girl in particular stuck out to me. Her name is Vilma. And she, at the end of the trip, gave us this picture of her with a blindfold on. And she said, Sophia, this is me before Girl Up came to my village, before they started providing programs here, because I, I didn't have literacy skills. I didn't know how to read. And I just didn't even know I had rights. And now that the program is here, I can remove the blindfold, because not only do I have the skills to read and write, I also can just see that I have rights and acknowledge that I can exercise those rights. So this trip was an incredible opportunity because I saw that it was making this Im impactful difference in their communities, but I also saw that there was so much left to be done. And so coming back to the US during prom season it was a hard transition, and it was, it was kind of really a, a difficult adjustment for me to, to feel like I just spent this time with these girls in Guatemala, but then also had th this different situation here in the US. But this stark contrast also helped me take what became this initial spark, 
this, in the, this thing that started that I started to profoundly change the way that I saw the world and I saw my role in the world, and I, I was able to form it into my question. And that is, how can I provide girls around the world with the tools they need to empower themselves and a platform from which to use their voice? But one thing that I learned in Guatemala that was really important in changing the way that I saw the work or that I was doing was that I have no ability, no right, no authority to empower others. That must come from within ourselves. But maybe there is a way for me to help you know, other girls find their spark and help empower themselves. And so I think one thing that I've learned from all of this, from all of these experiences is this, to be open and run with it, to take advantage of those opportunities that present themselves and to create them when they don't. Let yourself be sort of driven by that initial spark, but don't let that limit you from trying new opportunities, saying things that, or trying, you know, opportunities that maybe don't think sound that interesting at the beginning, because that's really when you'll be able to run with it. Looking back on my, on my experiences, it's in those moments where I chose things, or put myself in challenging situations, that I was forced to make difficult decisions, that even forced me to question my own sense of self, my own sense of agency, that it really gave me the momentum to move forward and to keep building on my spark. And so right now, I am in my first semester of college, or close to finishing up my first semester of college, um, and I'm still in this process of exploring. I, I'm trying to figure out how I can combine my interests for women's rights, for global health, for human rights, for storytelling, for collaborating. And I don't really know where I'm heading, but I know that I have this question, and so I'm continuing to you know, work on building a platform of college students, uh, or a platform online that college students around the country can communicate on these issues and collaborate, because I've seen how powerful uh, collaboration can be. But I, I don't really know where I'm heading, but I know that with my question and my guiding spark, I'll, I'll somehow find it. And so um, before I end, I just want to leave you with this which has sort of served as my mantra throughout the years. And that is, be passionate and act bold. This has helped me ignite my spark and fan my flame, and I hope that it'll do the same for you all. Thank you so much.